Hello everyone, my name is Robin and welcome back to Doki Doki Salvation Remake. So in the last episode, MC and Sayori are playing some board games and when MC uses the bathroom, he finds out that Sayori's pill jar is empty and when he finds out that Sayori hasn't been taking her pills, they both get into a pretty heated argument which ends up MC leaving her house and him talking things out with Yuri. He gets some advice to like give her a day to like sort things out for herself and that's pretty much the gist of it. We left off here, so let's continue. Another day passes in a flash. More and more strange visions are appearing. First two days were tolerable. Today is when things start to get worse. Every time I enter a room, lines of text flash before my eyes. Every time I sit myself down in class, it never fills up. It's completely empty. School's completely empty. Not a single soul is present here, and it's making me lose my mind. A few days ago, I met a girl named Sayori. No, almost nothing about her, despite only knowing her for such a short amount of time. Right down to the outfits she wears, the food she prefers, and worst of all, her depression. There are three others. A girl named Yuri, and Natsuki, and a boy named... Ah, shit. <laughs> Covering my mouth subconsciously, and I'm not really used to swearing. <laughs> Don't know who this boy is. Sari seemed to mention a friend of hers the other day. Is that who she's talking about? The only thing I can see that far into the future, I guess. Don't really have the right idea of what abilities I have now. No, I'm somewhat omnipotent. Omnipotent? Didn't have, didn't take much to figure that out. First few days were bad, weren't weren't bad. I was able to maintain my composure and focus on the club. Sari and I discussed ideas on how to recruit new members. It was after that day that I, when I realized that there are only three other members to recruit in the first place. Such perfect timing for me, isn't it? The moment I get an opportunity to make a club exactly how I envisioned it, this happens. Oh my God! <laughs> Stop! Cried out in pain. Voice echoes in the empty hallways of the school. Despite knowing no nobody can hear me, I still try looking around hoping someone would pop out from around the corner. Sayori, where are you? Uh-oh. As I reach for the club door, I notice I'm already in it basically instantly. I need to see another face. Sayori, please show up. God, how selfish is that? She has depression. I know she does. And yet I'm still letting myself be comforted by her for my own selfish needs. It's not fair to her. Club room's door slides open and Sayori walks in with her usual smile. Please end up straight and regain my composure. Oh. God, every time she does anything, <laughs> text just appears in her face. Hey, Monica, sorry I'm late again. It's okay, welcome back. Ever see scratch my head. I'm trying to hide how happy I am to see another face is getting pretty difficult to do. Hey, is everything okay? You seem a bit stressed. Is getting new members still stressing you out? No, I, uh, went out thinking I quickly wrapped my arms around Sierra and tried to hold her tight. Try to hold... Can't feel her. Can't feel her body touch mine. I'll leave the straw, I slowly let go and move back. <laughs> He's need a hug today too, huh? I stay silent. Try to at least give her a smile, but I'm struggling to process what I've just experienced right now. There's no way she isn't... No, oh, she's real. She's right there. I'm sorry. I'm a horrible friend. What? What are you talking about? You're an amazing friend. Shaking my head. How can I be? Do you... I stop myself. Do I what? Do you lift, bro? <laughs> lift my hand and slowly press it against her cheek. Monica? Do you feel my hand? Yes. What's this about her? You okay? Shake my head once again and as, as I remove my hand. I couldn't feel her. It's nothing. I was just checking something. Sari looks around the room and spots her folder on my desk from the days prior. I never opened it. Not even once. Never had to. Oops. I felt I left my folder here. Is that what this is about? I'm not going to come up with a proper re response. I wasn't ready to share those. Hey, I want to let you know that I'm here for you. This won't change anything. I'm still your friend, and you're my vice president. I want us to keep working together on this club, and not just for my sake, but for the both of us. I believe that we can truly make this club special for everyone in it. I don't want you to worry about me. That's the last thing I want. Ah, oh, God. Lines of text begin flying around me, making it incredibly hard to concentrate, but I stay focused. That's not what I meant. It's about the club. I understand if you don't want to share anything now, but this is the literature club. Oh, jeez. I'm not going to hide the pain in my face, but I hold but I hold strong. This is a place where people will be able to express themselves in ways that they normally wouldn't be, be able to. That's the vision. No, it's our vision. So Sayori, promise me you'll remember that, okay? She smiles. I can't help but return, it, to return that smile. Sayori, that one day you'll trust me. <sighs> so much for all that, huh? I never wanted to believe it, but as soon as we hugged, deep down I already knew. 
you were just as uh, okay yeah i wonder uh, ugh. <laughs> if i had never come aware of this aware of this world this game where would we be today because it doesn't have to be any good to think about that now i have to keep moving forward oh finished with act two already I mean, three. <laughs> Pace back and forth on my front porch. Yesterday's argument with Siri doesn't feel real. Feels like I can waltz right up to her, up to her front door and say hello, but I can't do that. She didn't respond to my goodnight message last night, which only makes my anxiety spike. I have to trust her. I have to trust her. Read those words to myself out loud, trying to convince myself that she'll be okay. But every single time I close my eyes, ugh, yeah. The sheer trauma of it is all embedded into my head, affecting every single decision I make, regarding her at least. Take a look at my phone, half hoping to see a text from her. Well, Saturday. Don't really feel like doing any homework right now. You still had homework? On the, uh, I mean, actually, that's not surprising. Uh, that Friday can still give you homework. Anyways, maybe Monica can help me with this issue. Oh, yeah, uh, now that I mentioned, school for me is going to be starting on the 15th of August, so I won't, I probably won't be uploading as much anymore. And also another thing, when I'm entering school, I'm also going to become a senior, which means I have to deal with college applications and anything similar like that. So, wish me luck, I guess? Maybe maybe Monica can help, can help me with this issue. Remember that her and her and I did have a short conversation about Sayori and what she's been through. I know they both have a history with each other, one that I'm not completely, completely aware of. So maybe it could do us both some good. Uh, <laughs> As soon as Monica's text appears, I just burp. Monica clearly answers, but remains silent. Uh, hello? Hello? Robin? Yeah, it's me. Sorry if this is kind of sudden. No, not at all. Wasn't really doing much anyway. What's on your mind? Uh, I was wondering if we could meet up somewhere and grab a coffee. Wanted to talk about some things. I see. Sure. into the city and head towards the cafe. It's a wonderful day. Temperature is nice and the general vibe indicates the holidays are around the corner. I see Monica in the distance moving her head in all sorts of directions as she observes the world around her. Hey Monica, nice to see you. Hey Robin, see you too. Shall we head inside? After you, Miss President. Ah, uh, nothing better than the smell of freshly baked goodies on a Saturday. Sounded just like Sayori. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> uh, just... Pointing out the smell of cookies to make anybody a Sayori now? Say silence, I find myself only thinking about the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, Monica and I get in line and study the menu. So what is it you want to talk about? Uh, let's sort of first before I talk about that. It's kind of personal. Oh, okay. Sure. Stay so pretty silent while waiting for our turn when, with the occasional small talk about what to order and what coffee she drinks. We both order a small coffee and head to a table. Alrighty, so... If you might have already guessed, it's about Sayori. <laughs> Yeah, I figured it's gonna be about her. Did anything happen between you two? Yeah, something pretty major actually. Oh, I see. I had a pretty big fight last night. I got really upset at pause for a minute before mentioning her medication. It doesn't feel right to talk about stuff that personal with someone other than her. Well, I got upset at the fact that she isn't taking care of herself. You got upset? When she doesn't care of herself? Oh no! <laughs> Don't phrase it like that! You know in retrospect it wasn't my smartest move. That's alright, I understand. She changed facial expressions real fast. Must be, must be tough to see her suffering like that. It really is. I think I just I must have just snapped. I was so frustrated that I really wasn't really going, getting through to her. And how'd she react? Well, naturally she got upset at me too, and I think I finally revealed how I've been feeling about all this to her. I was putting up this front. I wanted to show her that taking care of her wasn't a burden. Ah, and you proved that it was? I guess so. I guess you were right. About what? What you said to me a few weeks ago. That Siri doesn't want to be helped. Uh, <laughs> well, that wasn't really right of me to say in, in hindsight. I've been going through some rough times myself. I think I was letting my frustrations out, and that wasn't right of me to do. Monica stayed silent for a while. Do you mind if I talk to her about all this? I place my hands on the table and begin to fidget around my fingers. Is that a good idea? I mean, Monica and Siri are close friends, right? You don't think she'd be upset at you getting into her business, do you? I don't think so. Her and I used to be close after all. Used to. Yeah. It's another wound for another day. I'd still like to try. I can see how much she means to you. I'll see if she's available to hang out tomorrow, and I'll let you know how things went. Is that okay? 
All right. I trust you. Monica and I both take a sip of our coffee at the same time. By the way, <laughs> oh, you've been looking more tired than usual lately. Is everything all right? Uh, sorry, that probably sounded rude. <laughs> guess I'm just a little worried. Well, I guess I've been putting my work pile up on me, but thanks for showing concern. I appreciate that. Of course. It's funny. I don't think I've ever saw my myself sitting here talking to you about Sayori and stuff. Oh, why's that? It's kind of silly, really. But things you said about Sayori and what happened with Yuri did make me a bit hesitant to trust you. That being said, seeing how tired you are and all the stuff you've been you've got going on, I understand. What? Yeah, it's kind of admirable, really. How much you seem to be trying to make up for things and your willingness to help me with Sayori. But why? It's pretty obvious that you and Sayori haven't really been on... Uh, been 100% with each other, but despite all that, the both of you still care for each other, at least from what I can see. So, even if it sounds kind of dumb, uh, ugh. <laughs> I figured that you'd understand where I'm coming from with all this. I see. Well, glad you think of that. Think that of me, Robin. I do understand how you're feeling. I really do. And I promise to do the best I can to help you and Sayori get back together. Uh, as friends first, of course. Don't want to jump the gun. <laughs> Chuckled softly and looked down at my coffee. Better latte than never. It's better latte than never. <laughs> oh. Yeah, thanks again, Monica. Appreciate it. Let the conversation drift to more lighthearted topics as we finish our coffees. Don't really go back to the topic of Sayori. We mostly stick to stuff that revolve around school and the club. Throughout the conversation, Monica had, no had noticeable long pauses in which she stared off into the distance or looked around the room frantically as if she was looking for something. Didn't think to question that, though. Thanks again for coming out with me. Really needed it. Of course, friends after all, but we do. <laughs> yeah. See you around then. Monica is goodbye and heads in the opposite direction. I make my trek home and think about Sayori. Not really sure what's going what I agreed to back there. Getting one of my friends involved in Sayori and Ai's drama this directly might have not been the best idea to go through with. But they're good friends, and I even go as far as to say they're better friends than her and I are. But then there's that wound Monica brought up. Something happened between the two. Clearly not big enough for them to not be on speaking terms, but also that's small enough, not small enough to where they're still the same friends as they once were. Pull out my phone and open up Sayori's messages. I'm thinking I type, you're doing okay, and hit send. I stare at the messages for a bit, contemplating why I bothered her with this after the fight we had, but I don't know. Ah, shit. It seems pretty harmless to me. Let out a sigh and place my phone back in my pocket. As much as this situation sucks, I've got to work on myself now. Even if things don't work out the way I'd like them to, I have to take better care of myself and my grades. Because that's all she really wanted me to do for her. Uh, let's go back to this line. I had to take care, better care of myself and my grades. That's going to be me in like the next couple of days. Shame it, it took all this for me to realize that. A few hours have gone by. That time I've contacted the, my teachers and dis, to discuss makeup work. Studied up for a few upcoming exams and got various missing assignments completed. Good for you. Probably the hardest I've worked on anything school related in a while. Sit back in my chair and let out a sigh. Yeah, the hardest much the hardest amount of work you've put into school on a Saturday. Pull out my phone and Oh, so you responded. Pull thumbs up emoji in response to my previous question, but a response nonetheless. Put my phone back down and lean over in my chair. Wish this was easier to manage. This parano paranoia and fear that I have. I mean that that means I only care about her a lot, right? Can't lie to myself and say that I'm not sticking around to ease my own guilt either. Some of my face that honestly. Don't really know what I'm supposed to be, what how I'm supposed to be honest about that with her. But the way she's always on my mind, the way I've let myself go in order to make sure make sure she's okay, you know that's the last thing she wanted me to do. Because only now I'm starting to realize how utterly serious Sayori's depression is. I've been an awful friend to her. Even after all this time, I struggled to be that friend she sees me as. I can't help but feel like this is a sign that things aren't really gonna work out between us. But I don't want to give up. I don't want to give up on her. I want to try to understand everything that she's feeling. I want to understand where I went wrong. But in order to do that, she has to talk to me. It's a whole other can of worms to open up. I sigh again and prepare myself to tackle more schoolwork. Hope this isn't the end for us, Sayori. I hope so, but I think things will end up good because of the, well, A, the old salvation, and B, I'm pretty sure there are, I've seen, you know, the infamous picture of MC and Sayori happily together. I think that's something in that happens somewhere in the end. Feel it. That same feeling. Oh, jeez. Stumble over slightly, but quickly regain my bearings. That feeling. Something changes dramatically in the code during these moments. And I can never grasp what it is. But I have a 
much bigger concern now. Sayori, the day, the day I'm supposed to meet her at her house, opened up our messages from a few hours prior. Her messages seemed cold and dry, which only worries me even more. There might be some Monica and Sayori drama. Let's go find out. Other way, she'd agreed to meet up with me at her place. Place my fingers on my eyebrows and go to myself. I shouldn't be worried. She said herself she'd like to be friends again after all. Put my school bag resting on a chair across the room. Sorry, just that note she left me. That note is proof that she's willing to try again. And that could be the last thing I need to save myself. But even my own mind. I'm growing increasingly disgusted with myself and the thoughts I'm having. Every ounce of my being wants this to be the solution to all my problems. And yet, I can't deny what my heart feels. I miss Sayori. miss our friendship. Wish I could tuck these feelings away and lock them up forever. But I can't. Before heading out, I decide to give Sayori a call to let her know I'm on my way. As my fingers hover over the call button, I begin to shiver. The ghastly memories of everything I've tried doing are flooding in. I wanted you gone. I needed you gone. She's beginning to well up. Yeah, you tried to erase her, but I need you now. I hit call and slowly place the phone up to my ear. that the first phone call I've made to Sayori in a long time ends. This robber situation must have really thrown her off deep off the deep end. Wouldn't want something bad to happen to her. Even back then, never truly wanted her to. I shake my head and head into the bathroom to get changed. I can no longer use the console to change my clothes, so the manual way I will have to do. After a short 10 minute trek, I arrive in Sayori's neighborhood. From memory, I'm able to recall exactly where both Robin and Sayori live, despite never personally visiting either of them. Hopefully that's a detail Sayori can overlook. Reach Sayori's front door and knock gently. Good morning, Monica. Her tone completely contra contrasts the tone she had over the phone. It's 2 in the afternoon, Sayori. <laughs> it is? Because I lost track of time. Happens to the best of us. Come in? Of course. <laughs> Mikasa is Sukasa. Sayori happily lets me and does a little spin before inviting me to sit on the couch. I think that's supposed to say, lets me in. Sorry if the place is a mess. Mess? Doesn't look messy at all. I'd even say it's cleaner than my place. Ah, uh, you're just saying that to be nice. Happy you're here though. Was, was there anything you wanted to talk about? I'll walk over and sit myself down next to Sayori on the couch. Upon closer inspection, her neck seems to be lazily covered up with concealer. And even though she's giving me a friendly smile, I can easily recognize that somber look she's always given me for so long. Well, I should first ask how you're feeling. You doing okay? It's been quite some time since we've gotten together to talk like this. Eh, yeah, really has. Mm, I missed it. I've been doing okay though. Just trying to get through each day little by little. That's good to hear. There isn't anything else you'd like to talk about? Nope. Sarah keeps on smiling, doing her best to hide the pain she's probably in at the moment. Listen, uh, I want to talk... Oh, okay. Here it goes. Came to me for advice, and I said I'd like to talk to you. I'd, I'd, I'd talk to you about this. Uh oh. I want to see you two succeed, and he really does seem to care about you. Did he tell you everything? Enough to know that you guys aren't ha are having some trouble. We're all friends, and I want what's best for you both. Wait, wait, wait. That doesn't make any sense. What about what you told me in the club that day? How can I believe that what you're saying when you told me that Robin didn't love me? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, you messed up! I subconsciously cross my legs and feel my heart beat extremely fast and hard. Siri doesn't seem upset in the slightest. Her look of in innocence and slight confusion is hitting me in my core. I wanna run. I don't wanna face this anymore. Sorry, I didn't really mean to bring that up. This came out. You're right anyway. He basically told me himself. It was all out of pity. I showed too much of my true self to him. I, I now And now I feel like I'm ruining his life just by being there. Siri. I was going through a lot that time. I didn't mean you did mean it. I knew you were already going through something that I always knew. I just never really knew what. And after everything you told me, I figured I should just give you space. Look down at my knees. Maybe I did at the time. I thought what I was saying was the right thing to say. I got too lost in my own head, my own goals. I grew resentful, bitter. I don't think I could ever go into detail as to what's going on in my life. I wouldn't even know where to start if I did. But you're right. You're right about it all. 
I should have listened to you instead of being the selfish girl I always have been. Sorry. But it's okay. I still see you as one of my closest friends. I, I trust you. Even though I did drift away from you, from you a bit after that day, I still consider you one of my bestest friends. How can you? How can I not? We all have things that make us act irrationally. Or sometimes we say things we think we mean when deep down we really don't. Even if I don't fully know what, what it is you're going through, I completely understand. And this began to quiver as my true feelings began to see through the cracks. Who am I even kidding anymore? Who am I trying to fool? Sayori. I look up at Sayori, who seems shocked at my s current expression. You have no idea how difficult it is for me to believe anything you say. I figured you'd say that. Way back when we first met, you started showing signs of that. Always lost in your own mind. But you used to be different. You were there for me. You wanted, you wanted what was best for the club. You changed once Robin got involved. But I understand you. I know what it's like to not believe what anybody tells me. The voice in my head is a lot more convincing. Is that what happened between you and Robin? Did you guys have a fight about that? Yeah. I said something they didn't mean, even if I did mean them in the moment. Part of me wishes I could take it all back. But I know what that pro that Robin and I probably aren't ever going to work out the way I wanted us to. <laughs> I should apologize for not listening to you back then. I'm still pretty selfish. Sorry. I don't want you to give up. You two have proven a lot to me, and I'm ready to admit that I was wrong. What I'd like for you to do now is talk to me. I want to know your, how you're feeling. I want to keep, I want to help you get through this. Part of me wants to believe you, but I'm sure you already know. It's very hard for me to do that. I'll slowly to show my understanding. I keep thinking to myself that me and Robin weren't meant to work out. I can't just erase what I did. I can't erase all the trouble I've put on him. It doesn't feel right to put all that extra weight on him. So... Even when you say you didn't mean any of the things you said to me before, you were right about it, it all in the end. Sari looks at me with such insincerity that it's proof she's completely sure of the words she's saying. In her mind, she thinks that it's over. Her and Robin aren't going to work out. The darkness in my mind is ecstatic over this idea. I slightly hit wave a few of my fingers in the air. Mm. I hear you. That's all I really know what to say here. But I promise you that I hear and understand what you're saying. Smile slightly. You know I'm making this difficult. I mean, I know I'm making this difficult. One of the few things I do best. What I don't understand is, why does my heart want something completely different from what I'm thinking? What does your heart want? I want Robin to still be there for me. I want him to hold me tightly and tell me that everything's okay. I also wish he could understand me a bit better. I know that's selfish of me, but it's what my heart wants. He's the one that told me to try and listen to my heart more. So that's what I'm doing. I just, I'm just so tired. Tired of the constant battles I have with myself. Internal struggles, huh? She nods. I can't really say I know how to help with that. I've got, a, quite, I got, I've got quite a few of those myself. They seem to really affect you. I try so hard to hide it, but it really seems to be putting a lot of stress on your shoulders. I can't help but chuckle a bit at the realization that Sayori's basically been seeing right through, the, through me without me noticing. You hide things too, you know. That's only because I already hurt everyone so much with what I've done. I'm trying so hard to make up for all of it. Sari's lips begin to quiver immensely. She's trying to hold everything in. Hey, take a deep breath and prepare yourself for what I'm about to do. Everything's okay, Sayori. You don't have to try so hard for us anymore. Flashes on my previous states of mind begin to rush around in my head. Memories of everything I wanted to do to this girl. Let it out. I'm right here. I hesitate slightly before opening my arms and inviting her for a hug. Oh, 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 God. I joined as Sari let out a cry and then embra embraces me. I can feel everything. I slowly wrap my arms around her, letting her tears soak into my clothes. I close my eyes and wave my fingers in the air once again. Frustration and fear begin to build up inside. Does the game think I'm not sincere enough? Or is it possible that my fate was sealed the moment my epiphany struck? I gently rub Sayori's back. I know I'm not being manipulative here. I really do care about this girl. You're doing a great job, Sayori. I know it's really hard to believe that. But I've seen you from the sidelines. You've made amazing improvements and have grown so much since the day we met. I know I let our friendship fade away, but I'd like to try to fix that. You just have to let me. I don't know if I can. I just lost Robin. I don't want to lose you too. You haven't lost anyone. He's still willing to try for you. He, she hugs me tighter. I know it hurts to know that. I begin to feel a feeling I've never felt before. A feeling of co connection as Sari tightens her embrace. I'm not sure if this is because of my hyper-awareness. But I can almost feel the endless waves of thoughts in her head. 
These stupid pills. Hmm. Sorry. I just got so annoyed with them, Lonnie. And I feel so guilty. I threw them all away because they just weren't helping. Every single time I took them, every single time Robin brought them up, it was a reminder of what I did to myself and what I did to everyone. And I'm so stupid for letting him find out. I just wish I had some magical button that could make me better. Which could just make all of this go away. You're very strong, Sayori. Strongest girl I've ever met. But now, more than ever, I just feel like a complete burden on everyone. Everyone is just forced to put up with me because of what I did to myself. I really, really hate it. I hate all of it. Sayori's voice is quivering and shaking violently as she speaks, struggling to hold in the overwhelming emotions as she's overwhelming emotions she's kept bottled up for so long. I don't want to have these thoughts. I don't, I don't, I don't. And now you're here putting up with my crap like Robin is. Her composure is all, is all but present. And as number increases, I haven't been paying attention to the access reset progress. I'm beginning to lose mine. I take a deep breath and hide the console from view to avoid the harsh reality of my situation. Even just for a moment. Because it is this moment for the first time since we've she walked in through those doors that I was that I want to be there for her. I'm not just putting up with you, nor is anybody. Not Natsuki, not Yuri, and not Robin. We're just being your friends. I can't just make these thoughts go away. Trust me. But what I can do is assure you that you don't have to face these internal battles by yourself. I may have done a horrible job of showing it in the beginning, but I want you to know that you really mean a lot to me and everyone else in the club. Without you, things wouldn't have been the same. You brought happiness to the club. And you still do. Isn't that one of your favorite things to do? I feel her slowly nod. Sarah and I continue sharing our embrace. I let out a few tears of myself, making sure to control my breathing. The harsh reality of all this is, deep down, I know I'm still doing this for myself. I ignore my own instincts. I'm trying to do everything I can to stop the reset. Even if it means letting go of my defenses and showing my true feelings. Sari was and is my true first friend in the world. Feeling of warmth and connection with another person starts to hammer itself into my mind. I smile and hug Sayori tightly, trying to make the hug last for as long as I can. <laughs> Sayori suddenly giggles. I guess that's the power of hug energy. <laughs> smile and pat Sayori's back. Uh, you said it. After a few more minutes, we both decide that our conversation is over for today. Still, never really felt ready to fully face my previous mental states. I guess I'm just afraid of taking all that at face value. I begin thinking about it. Every, even just thinking about it starts to sicken me to my stomach, more so knowing that it's still there, welling up deep inside. It's only bad because I'm presented with an opportunity to turn things to my, into my favor. But I take it? Siri and I both walk outside and take a moment to breathe in some fresh air. So, Lonnie, huh? <laughs> I don't think you've caught me that in a while. Eh, it slips out from time to time. It's nice to hear. Glad you think so. Thanks for coming over to see me, by the way. Of course. You should try to do this more often. I think I'd like that. By the way, I have an idea for what we can do in the club meeting this week. I'm sure you'll love it. Oh, alright, let's hear it then. I want to keep it a secret. I want to hear how the whole club reacts to it. Ooh, a surprise activity. I'm down. I guess that means you and Robin are still going to show up? I don't know about that. I'd like for him to. But I'd understand if he needed to take some time away from it. What about you? You don't need a break? Nope. I'd like for things to try to go back to the way they used to be. Don't worry about Robin and me. I think I can try to talk with him when I'm ready. Alright then. See you tomorrow. Just ask me if you need anything. Bye, Monica. Jerry does a little happy wave and uh, heads back inside. Take a moment to observe my surroundings again, taking in the still unfamiliar feeling of the outside world. Heart seems a bit as I remember the reset progress hasn't stopped. Not even for a bit. Don't even want to look at where it is, at, where it's at now. The only thing that's really beginning to set in is the reality of the situation. This is, of course, assuming a reset means my memories are wiped, or if I'm deleted from the world altogether. Either way, it doesn't sound good. I'm slowly make my way back home, telling myself that maybe, just maybe, this world will be better off without me anyway. Ugh. Hurry up! Okay, thank you. Oh my god. 
But anyways, I'm going to have to end off the episode here. So that has been Doki Doki Salvation Remake for now. Thank you all for watching. I hope to see you all in the next video.